Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Liar. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes, and let's jump right in. All right, all right, alarm chain, you're up. All right, let's go. All right, so let me back up just a little bit. A chill runs down my spine. After I cut him off, he stops talking altogether, and he speaks up in a soft tone. I will not do anything. You, however, will regret this. For a moment, I consider their advice. Only for a moment, though. For the past five minutes, my life feels like it's been rushed to a sudden stop. I'm at the top of, a f of the figurative stairs in front of me, and in front of me lies the inevitable. Sorry, Tigran, but I'm not risking my life on this. It's now or never. Oh, shit. The entire presence of the cell implodes as I succumb to the feeling of the void. At first, there's nothing. It's like I'm sleeping. Suddenly, sharp pains erupt throughout my body. Blow after blow sends me into a whirl of agony. My body feels like it's being ripped through all of reality as I know it. It's almost indescribable. My very existence is being torn in two as I delve into the past, and then I'm falling. The black void doesn't let us as less doesn't let up as I'm thrown to the hard floor. I get the ooh, excuse me. I get the feeling of recovering from falling out of bed, but it's a hundred times worse. This is all accompanied by loud crashing sounds. My whole body ruptures in on itself. The blurry darkness fades away as my eyes flicker open. Did it work? I feel like I'm slumped up against something I can only, and I can only see the window and a bit of the wall. I'm definitely in Rainer's body. I don't really get time to assess my surroundings as a terrible pain strikes through, through, my bo through his body. Nothing else matters in that moment as my entire being is filled with all kinds of emotions and feelings. It's like someone took my insides and crushed them in their hands. My soul feels like it wants to cave in on itself, but the body I'm in just lays there. I can feel some sense of Rainer trying to get up, but the overwhelming amount of emotions and pain clouds that. Fear, anger, shock, sadness. Not to mention the unbearable suffering that works through my body like a wreathing snake. It's a hot, searing pain like someone's holding a torch to my chest. I can feel the blood rushing down my chest in a thick, heavy stream. I've been cut and gashed before, but this is nothing like that. I want it to stop, but I can't let that happen. As much as I want this to be over with right now, I have to see it through to the end. If I could feel my own heart, I'm sure it would be racing in my chest. Rainer certainly is. With every single beat, I could feel more blood gush out of the wounds in his torso. It's agonizing, but I need to keep going. Everything seems normal so far. Nothing twisted or blurry. It all feels as accurate as it could be on that night. He struggles to lift himself into a sitting position, but only manages to turn his head. He's letting out several pained gasps and sounds, like he's trying to say something, but it only comes out in mumbled noises. It's devastating. I can't help but feel sorry for him. And yet, deeper, and yet a deeper feeling eats away at my thoughts. Something worse than sorrow. He didn't deserve to die like this. His vision falters for a moment, but he manages to stay conscious. Outside the window, snow whirls by, wind beating against the glass. The shimmering aurora on the horizon peeks through the stormy clouds and casts an ominous green moonlight throughout the room. In that emerald light, I see them. A figure in a dark and shiny leather cloak approaches from the foot of the bed. The hood casts a shadow over their face, so I can't quite make out who they are. They have to show their face at some point, though, so I hold on. They slowly walk towards the body slumped on the floor in front of them. They're covered in blood all over the front of their body and brandishing a long, pointed dagger. It's the exact dagger from that night. Seeing the weapon that caused these wounds makes them hurt even more. The gnarled shape of the blade would make even the strongest man writhe in agony. Blood, f blood runs down to the base of the blade and drips past the guard and onto the floor in front of them in dark puddles. None of the blood seems to be seeping into the clothing. It just flows right off in thick streams. They hold the tip of the blade close to their face as if looking at it, though I can't know for sure. Their hands start to shake slightly but steadies as they turn to look at Rainer. I can't even see their eyes, but I can feel their vision piercing into my soul. Another strange thing is the fact that the curtains are flowing like there's a light breeze, but the windows aren't open. The window isn't open. The pain that was once unbearable is now slowly beginning to numb as I feel Rainer's body lose its hold on life. The feeling is terrible, and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. His vision is beginning to become more and more blurred, eyelids wavering. Lightning strikes outside of the window, and I get a glimpse of their face illuminated in the contrasting light for just a moment. It's not enough to be able to tell who they are, but my eyes are slowly adjusting to the darkness. Their face looks human from what I saw. 
There it is again. It's a male human, I'm certain of it. Not only that, but they look familiar, too. But... No. That's even more strange. I don't think I've met a human male in Liar. Not well enough to recognize one for that matter. Something about this isn't right. It's hard to think with this excruciating pain shooting through my body. And all the emotions overwhelming my senses. As I focus on trying to reorient myself, Rainer's eyes finally adjust to the darkness of the room. What I see next is true horror. Ah, it's the Phantom of the Opera! No. It's... Me. I almost don't want to believe it. I don't even want to see it. But there I am, staring back at myself. I'd say it's like looking in a mirror, but it's far from it. Because when he stares back, he sees only he only sees a deer. And I can see it on his face. My face. This can't be real. He has a cold and analyzing gaze. Eyes shining a tense green. His warm skin looks pale in the dim moonlight. This isn't right. I know I didn't kill Raynor. This vision is wrong. Tigran was right. I should have listened to them. Raynor's eyes finally give up, and I feel his body being drained of its life. I can't see anything, but I'm still there. The scene marches on around me. The doppelganger's presence moves behind Raynor, and then he's lifted up and forward by his antler. I can feel something cold being pressed to his neck. Then it drags across the fur and skin, going deeper and deeper. A scorching hot pain overwhelms his, overwhelms my throat by a sharp and unbearable jolt. No! Huh. My mind is torn out of Rainer and I'm back in the cell. I'm laying on the ground in a fetal position, tears streaming down my face. They soak the ground beneath my head and I have a bit of mud sticks to my face as I lit, lift myself up. The pain in my chest is gone, but my heart is still racing. The only thing that hurts now is my head. It's several times worse than any of the more recent headaches. A constant pounding against the side of my head, like someone's banging rocks against it. Are you okay? Why would they ask that? They already know how I feel. I'll be fine. Are you sure? They don't answer, and I hear them sigh. Leuven, I tried to tell you. No, you're... You were right. <clears throat> Get up and brush myself off. Cold dirt sticking to my clothes. I'm still shaking all over. I'm sorry for not listening. I sit down in the corner of the bed by the window. I saw everything. That was a horrible! I can tell they're trying to pick their words carefully as they continue to speak. The past hurts. You know that better than most considering your first real experience with a vision. Think back to the scene playing out with the Queen's death as Rainer as Rainer lays there, helpless to stop it. An assassin with a dagger taking life for some unknown reason. What you just did, I've seen it drive most men insane. Or close to the edge, so to say. I feel insane. You're not. I'm honestly surprised. Your vision, it was clearer than I thought it would be. I get into a sitting position. Not clear enough. Do you know... It's hard to form the words after everything that just happened. Yes? Do you know why I was the assassin? Does it mean anything? It take a few seconds to form an answer. It doesn't mean anything. It's just your own mind playing tricks on you. Or, could it be that you feel guilty for his death? They say those last few words with a bit of carefulness in their voice. It's not that I feel completely guilty, I just... I think back to the night when it all happened. Render said that he wanted to see me in his chambers later. I didn't really think about it too much, so I went off and spent the rest of the night with Lyle. Then I got a bit carried away. When the servant was sent for me to was sent for me, I took my sweet time getting ready, and when I got there, it was already too late. I just wonder sometimes, if I had gotten, if I had just gotten there a bit earlier, I might have been able to do something about it. I know. You've been suppressing this feeling for quite some time. It's not your fault, though. What happened can't be changed, and it can't be helped. You just need to focus on what's to come. You're right. I just need to do what I can to fix this mess. Make sure the future isn't as dark. That reminds, that reminds me. Before I can ask them anything, I become more aware of the sound of armor clanking together. It sounds like a guard is pacing around the tunnel. Hang on. I don't want any more interruptions. I close my eyes and concentrate. Then within seconds, I'm in the mind's eye. Come on out, Ty. I haven't been called that in a long time. I won't call you that if you don't want me to. 
Leuven, I could care less what you call me. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Of course. You know that book Leaf showed me? Yes. It said something about your purpose. Something about how you're here to guide everyone to a brighter future. Yes, it did say something like that, about that. What of it? Is it true that you know what's going to happen? In the future? They take their paw and brush it along the scales on their arm, giving it some thought. In a way, yes. But it's a more compli- but it's a bit more complicated than that. How so? Think of it like this. They place their finger on one of the scales on their arm. You believe there to be a single future that can be altered depending on choices made in the present, correct? I suppose. Well, that's not entirely true. With this, they slightly lift the scale, making the others in front of it lift up a bit as well. There's so many possible futures. They're all playing out separately from each other, and every single one is different from the last in some way. The scales on their arm begin to bristle and create waves across the surface. It's mesmerizing. Each prediction and every decision leads into another, creating the flow of time. One future is not entirely discarded, but simply forgotten. These futures cannot be predicted long term, however. They guide their hands over their head, as if gesturing to all of these different realities. We can never truly tell which future will come, will come to be or which event is going to take place. We'll never know it's true until it happens. We? They lower their arm and gaze down at me with a disturbed look. Referring to mankind. Right. Does my future look bright? They let out another sigh. If I could tell you, I would. But sadly, I can't. That's why you have to trust me. I still don't like how much you hide from me. Even when you don't have to. They take a long, deep breath before speaking. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. I'm trying to protect you. From what? From everything. You're protecting me from everything? Leuven, I've been doing this for countless years, and I've had a long time to make many mistakes. A lot of mistakes. A pair of their arms hang limp at their side. Gods aren't perfect, Leuven. <sighs> And I'm the best example. I take a few steps toward their towering form so I can get a bit closer. Yes, but you've been- you've done a lot more than bad- good than bad, right? They look at me with a downhearted gaze. Of course, but that can never make up for all of it. Their chest heaves and they relax a bit. This is what it is, Lubin. This is what it is to be a god. They are sheep and you are the shepherd. Except there is no wolf. Only the sheep. And you sit there trying to stop the rams from killing each other, to no avail. For only a moment I catch a glimpse of sadness in their eyes. It quickly fades away, however. I never thought of it like that. It's just the way things are. Us gods can only help from the shadows. We cannot interfere with mortal affairs too much. Tigran, may I ask you a question? Her smile turns into a wary frown. Yes. I will try to be as open to you as I can. Who is Alverton? As the name slips from my mouth, I see their eyes stare off into space. They shake their heads slightly and answer. If you truly must know, I feel it is only fair given you were able to hear and to unearth that vision to begin with. Not only that, but I was the one who pushed you to try for something a bit new. Their arms wave to and fro as if at this point they're talking to themselves. Then, they look down and clear their throat, beginning to speak. You've heard the name before, have you not? It's an old name, but yes, I have. There is an island not too far south from where you currently are. Alverton Isle. To the east of Grimrock. Oh, oh god, makes me think of that game, Grimrock. Yes? The island was named after him. Over a thousand years ago. A thousand years? I didn't want to believe it at first, but it all makes sense. To think that I can see that far into the past. Was I right earlier? Is Alverton one of your avatars? A thoughtful look glazes over their eyes. Alverton was the first. He was my first avatar. What were you doing in that vision? They cross their arms. Instead of asking questions, just let me tell you what I know I can. Okay. They lower their arms and continue with a slight sigh. He was not only my first avatar, but the introduction to my existence. I would have done anything for him, even considering he's the reason. The reason for what? This is why I don't fear that this is why I don't like to tell stories. Their face is frozen as they whisper this under their breath, but they continue. Nothing. The point is, you have a lot to thank them for, and a lot to learn from them. I believe it to be beneficial for you to study their past. Study their past? Shouldn't I be focusing on studying Raynor's past? 
of course. But when you find the time, I would suggest looking into his past. The mind's eye, the mind's eye starts to slowly fade around me. Wait, I just have two more questions! Yes? First, when I was seeing Linda Alverton's past, I wasn't viewing it from his perspective. I was just floating around him like a ghost. Is that because he too is an avatar? Tigran places a hand under their chin and with an impressed look. Very good observation. Yes, that is the reason. And my last question. It would be better if I tried to see that knight through the killer's perspective? They tilt their head slightly and raise a hand. No. It would be even more difficult. You know King Raynor was killed on that night, so it's easier to envision it. But you don't know who the killer was. Trying to see a vision of that would be much harder. You learn that this applies to most visions of the past that are so recently laid out on the flow of time. Makes sense. Another reason I'm regretting that proposal is the fact that I'm not very eager to play out the scene of killing Raynor. Even if I'm not the one doing it. Okay. I think I'm ready to leave now. I need to rest after everything that just happened. They nod. Very well. I'll leave you with some advice before you go. Your only limit is your mind. Hmm. And he disappears. Before I can respond to their bit of advice, they disappear. With that, the mind's eye closes in around me. One second, guys. Okay, there we go. And just like that, I'm back in the cold, yet hot, inhuman cell. The sun is still high in the sky, and there isn't a cloud in sight. The clanking sound of armor that I remember hearing before seems to be getting louder. Whoever it is, they're getting closer. It's weird coming out of the mind's eye with not a second of time passed. A guard rounds the corner and drops a tray to the floor. It's not high enough to mess up the meal, but it still rattles around. Here's your food. There's a wooden cup of water and a bowl of porridge. A piece of parchment placed on the tray slowly drifts to the floor and lands in a puddle. The guard lightly kicks the tray so that it slides underneath the barred, the barred off door. The guard laughs to himself softly as he walks away toward the entrance to the dungeons. I rise from my seat and go to pick it up. Water drips from it, but it's still legible. Richter. Everything is going to turn out okay. I promise you this. You have all of my love. Lyle. Oh. Before I can even read the letter, my eyes glance down to see it's signed by Lyle. Seeing his, seeing his pretty handwriting messily thrown onto the paper fills me with a warm feeling. Just words of assurance are enough to make me smile in this lonely cell. What I would give to have him down here with me. He could take off all of that cold armor and hold me against his warm body. I'd sleep much better if that were the case. As I walk over to the pile of hay where I like to store things, I remember the medicine Leaf gave to me. My head is still aching from that nightmare of an experience from earlier. I slide the letter into the pile and pull out the small vial of pellets. I pull out the cork and pop and pop one in my mouth. It has a sour taste, but I quickly swallow it down using the cup of water. I'm not very hungry right now, so I just walk over to my bed and lie down. I need to rest my head for just a bit. What happened earlier took everything out of me. The thinking about it won't do me any good right now. But once I wake up, I'll figure it out. Before I know it, I'm falling fast asleep. This better not be the end. Okay, I'll save it right here, guys. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all, I'll see you next time. Bye bye